This is a 120 inch vanishing triple laser 4K TV that supports Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision, HDR10+, Active 3D, a dedicated 24 FPS mode for theater purists, Google Home and Alexa support, and a whole lot more that we'll be covering in this video. And based on this image quality, you may be surprised to find out that this is actually from an ultra short throw laser projector, namely the AWOL Vision LTV 3000 Pro, which was sent to me for a review. And while it has been mostly an excellent experience, there have been some issues you need to be aware of before you spend your hard earned cash on this unit. But before we start, when I said vanishing, I meant it. With a single press of a button, the entire screen will roll straight back down into a tiny little box that's about four inches tall on the ground. Now that's pretty impressive. A moment ago, I mentioned that this is a 120 inch laser TV, but that's only partially correct because this can adjust all the way down to 80 inches or all the way up to 150 inches, depending on how far the projector is from the screen. That's like having four 75 inch TVs side by side, and I don't even have a wall in my house big enough to demonstrate that for you guys. So with that out of the way, let's take a quick look at what you get in the box. We'll take a quick look at the setup process, then we'll jump right into some image quality tests. The first thing you'll notice in the box is that it comes with an Amazon Fire Stick 4K Max with Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos support. And this is what you'll be using to access any apps and digital content because there's no built-in app store on this projector. You also get an extended warranty card to give you a total of two years of warranty, a manual, a power cord, AV input adapter, a cleaning cloth, a AAA battery powered controller with tactile buttons, and of course, the AWOL Vision LTV 3000 Pro. Once everything's out of the box, the first thing you want to do is install the Fire Stick by pressing on this back casing to reveal a hidden compartment. Now just plug the Fire Stick into the HDMI and USB ports and put the cover back on. And in case you're wondering, you can use other things like a Chromecast Ultra if you prefer, but there's not enough power coming from the USB port, so you need to plug the Chromecast into an external supply, which just means you can't hide it behind this cover. But regardless, the Fire Stick 4K Max has everything you need to stream at max quality, so I personally recommend just sticking with the Fire Stick. Besides the hidden HDMI and USB ports, you get a few extra audio and video ports right in the back, including an Ethernet port in case you don't want to connect via Wi-Fi. And there's even one extra USB-A port on the side if you need it. In terms of adjustments to get your projector lined up perfectly with your screen, you get four manually adjustable feet at the bottom, an eight point keystone adjustment in the settings for fine tuning the image, and an electronic focus adjustment to make sure your image is clear from edge to edge. Now that the projector is set up, let's take a look at image quality starting with edge sharpness because that's an area that a lot of projectors struggle with. Fortunately, this projector uses a Ricoh lens with an extra wide 3.5 inch laser outlet allowing for an incredibly sharp image all the way out to the corners. So edge sharpness is great, but how does this perform in various lighting conditions? Let's find out. Both of these videos were shot with manual camera settings to ensure that you'd get a true to life comparison between the different lighting conditions. The left side is what the image looks like during the brightest part of the day with two windows open close by to the right, two floor to ceiling windows open on the left, eight recessed lights on, and one more overhead light on right in the center of the screen about four feet away. The right side is at night with no lights on. The only ambient light in the room is coming from the screen itself. The biggest difference here is in the dark shadow details. Since there's so much ambient light in the left shot, things start to look washed out but bright scenes are still viewable. And if I just turn the lights off and close the curtains, it does make a significant difference in daytime image quality. Okay, so bright images look great regardless of whether you're watching at night or during the day, but what about dark scenes in movies? This is notoriously the most difficult thing for a projector to get right. Well, let's take a look. At night, with the lights off, dark scenes look incredible. It's easy to see all the details in the shadows and I really have no complaints. To be fair though, don't expect those inky blacks that you get with an OLED or recent QLED TV. That's just not possible with this projector since the lasers never fully turn off. That means you'll get a very dark gray projected on the screen even when the whole screen is supposed to be black. Daytime viewing of dark seams becomes quite problematic for all projectors because the darkest area is limited by the darkest part of your screen. So the brighter the room, the harder it is to see the details and the shadows. And this is the best case scenario during the day with the lights off and the curtains closed. It's still far too bright in the room to see any meaningful detail. And if I open the curtains and turn the lights on, you can forget about seeing anything in the shadows. So if you're planning on watching darker content during the day, you will at the very least need blackout curtains 
and I'd highly consider getting the brighter yet more expensive LTV 3500 Pro. That projector can output 3500 peak lumens versus the 3000 peak lumens with this projector I have here. And this is probably a good time to mention the differences in screen types because depending on the screen you have, you'll have better or worse daylight visibility like in this setting here. So the screen I have here is an ambient light rejection screen or ALR for short. What that means is that this is not a flat screen. It's actually a sawtooth pattern that reflects light coming down from above back up and any light coming from below, like from the projector, back to the viewer. This is impossible to see by just coming up to the screen and looking at it. You would need a microscope to actually be able to see this ridge pattern. But if you take a light like from a smartphone and you shine it down from the top, you'll see that you get this small little glow and then it kind of fades away pretty quickly. But if you shine it from the bottom, you get a much bigger glow that fills up a larger part of the screen. And that's the ambient light rejection at work. And while this particular ALR screen does a great job of blocking light from above, it doesn't do that much for blocking light from the sides, because for that, you would need a daylight ALR screen, which uses a completely different type of pattern. But that does come with a significant trade-off. So this type of ALR screen, because it's only blocking light from above, you get a 170 degree viewing angle, which basically means if you're on this side of the screen and you can see the screen, you're gonna get a great viewing experience. But if you switch to a daylight ALR screen, since it's blocking a lot of the light from the sides, it's gonna reduce your viewing angle to just 90 degrees. And anything in that 90 degree area, if anyone is sitting in that area, they're gonna get a great viewing experience. But as soon as they move outside of that area, all of a sudden the image is gonna to start to look less and less contrasty and more and more faded. So if you don't need light to be blocked from the sides, I recommend getting just the regular ALR cinematic screens from AWOL Vision. And while we're talking about the screen, let's take a quick look at how it goes up and down because it's actually pretty cool. But first, we need to flip it around. That was probably the worst jump cut in the history of jump cuts, but whatever. We're here, it's flipped around, and I can show you some pretty cool stuff here. So you see these two massive rods across the back, and at first I thought these were motorized rods, but they're not. These are actually just spring rods that are always pushing up, and there's a motor that runs along the bottom in this massive rod here that the screen rolls into, and that's what's actually allowing the screen to raise up and lower. So if I go ahead and just push this button here to lower the screen, you'll see that the arms are gonna scissor back in, and what's happening at the bottom is the screen is being rolled in by the motor, pulling against the springs and allowing everything to settle down. When you release it and have it go back up, what's happening is it's just unrolling it and the springs are pushing the screen up. So it's a pretty clever design and it works really, really well. As if vanishing into the ground wasn't cool enough, this screen has three more party tricks. For starters, right here along the bottom, you'll see this mesh section. And the purpose of this is to be a sound permeable region. So if you're gonna connect this to a surround sound system setup, and you're gonna have your center speaker behind the screen, this region is the area to place it so that you get full sound transmission from behind the screen. Now, I personally did try using a sound bar that was about this level right behind the projector for my surround sound system setup, and that worked pretty well. I didn't have any issues with that, but the official place to put it would be in this mesh area down here. The second trick is that you could change the automatic stop height to be whatever you want, and that's especially important if you have the entire screen unit raised up higher than the projector. To do this, all you have to do is press the raise button and hold it until you hear a beep. And once you hear the beep, you can change the height to be whatever you need. And once you have your new height set, just wait about 30 seconds till you hear a confirmation beep. Then the next time you raise the screen back up, it's going to automatically stop at that height. And third, it comes with this little dongle here that plugs into the back of the projector. What this does is allow you to control the screen with the projector's remote instead. This will also automatically raise the screen when you turn the projector on and lower the screen when you turn the projector off, making for a much more seamless experience. And one last very important thing to point out about this vanishing screen is that it is super heavy, which is great because it means it's super stable, but you're definitely gonna need two people to move this along. And I'm sure somebody was gonna ask, so this is the sound bar I was using. It is the Sonos Arc. And this is a 65 inch OLED TV for reference to size. Obviously this looks super tiny compared to the projector because it is, uh, but yeah, so there's that. And one important thing to know about floor rising screens in general is that since it's just held up with spring tension, they can get a little bit wobbly if you have a fan blowing onto the screen. 
So right now I've got a fan that's probably only three and a half, four feet in front of the screen. And as you can see, it is wobbling a little bit with that fan on at its max speed. So just something to be aware of with floor rising screens, generally speaking. Now let's talk about how this projector handles different types of content, starting with gaming, because gaming is notoriously a very difficult thing for projectors to do because they typically have a really high latency, which is the delay between when something happens on your controller and when you see that happen on the screen. But fortunately, this AWOL projector has a few things to help with that. Number one, if you jump into the settings and you go into image, then advanced settings, you'll see this low delay mode. Enabling this alone is good enough to be able to play pretty much any game without any issues. But if you're gonna be playing something like a first person shooter or other super fast paced game that you really need a quick reaction time for, then you're gonna wanna back out of this menu, back out again, and you're gonna wanna go down into the light menu, scroll all the way to the bottom and enable turbo mode. This is going to make things much faster. It's gonna drop your latency down to just 15 milliseconds for 4K 60 FPS content, or all the way down to eight milliseconds if you're gonna be doing 120 hertz gaming at 1080p. But you do lose two things here. You'll see that you lose your keystone correction, which is the correction for getting the edges of the screen to fit in the bounds of your screen. And 3D will also be disabled, which isn't too big of an issue because most games don't even have a 3D capability anyway. So as long as you're okay with that, hit continue. And once I enabled that, you will see that the keystone correction was disabled. So my menu icon is kind of up here on the edge. So you will need to adjust your projector a bit to make sure that everything does fit within the bounds of the screen again. But this mode will make it easy to play any competitive games. If you're watching a movie, you want to jump into the settings and set MEMC to movie mode. This will give you the true 24 frames per second output so you can get that natural cinematic motion blur. If you accidentally set MEMC to high, it'll get rid of the motion blur and add that soap opera effect to your movie, completely ruining the experience. The high mode it does come in handy for sports content though, because it makes everything look more realistic. Three movies are another huge selling point here, mainly because it's such a massive screen. And I've watched plenty of 3D movies on large traditional TVs, but it's generally been pretty underwhelming because the screens just haven't been big enough for an immersive experience. But at 120 inches, that changes everything and dramatically increases the 3D effect. So if you're gonna be getting one of these projectors, I highly recommend getting some 3D movies to go with it. In terms of the technology used here, AWOL uses active DLP 3D technology and supports frame packing, side by side, top bottom, and frame of continuous formats. So if you already have a pair of DLP Link Active Shutter 3D glasses, you're good to go. Otherwise, AWOL sells a set that you could purchase separately. And the glasses AWOL makes are great. They're lightweight and plenty comfortable to wear even if you put them on top of regular glasses. A minute ago, I talked about this sound permeable region at the bottom in case you wanted to put a speaker behind the screen. And that is something that I do recommend doing because while this projector does come with built-in speakers that do get pretty loud, they are kind of muddy and a bit too bassy. So if you really want excellent sound quality to match the excellent image quality, you are gonna to wanna to connect this to a surround sound setup. And doing that is actually pretty easy thanks to the eARC HDMI output on the back. And once you're connected, you just have to change your output device to HDMI eARC. Then you get three options for your output format. You can either use auto, PCM, or bypass. However, at the time of making this video, I did notice an issue where every time you turn the projector off and back on, there's a bit of an audio syncing issue where the audio is off by about a half a second. And so you'd have to come back into this setting and either switch to auto, PCM, or bypass. Basically just switch to any other setting and it fixes the audio sync issue. I did reach out to my contact at AWOL and their technical team is working on this uh, and they are trying to get a fix out as quickly as possible. So they know the issues there, they're working on a fix and they're gonna push a fix out with a firmware update as soon as they get it figured out. Another big concern for projectors is how loud the cooling fans are. And fortunately, this AWOL projector has a lot of venting on the sides, so the fans don't actually have to spin that hard and it's actually rated at 27 decibels, which is quieter than a whisper. And while you can technically hear the projector in a silent room, as soon as you start watching something and audio is playing, that audio is going to quickly drown out any sounds coming from the projector. Now I wanna show you guys some really cool features in the settings. So if we jump down here into the Bluetooth options, then management, you'll see that you can connect a bunch of different types of devices, everything from phones to wireless earbuds. So if I connect my phone, 
then I start playing music, it's going to open up a music player on the projector and it's going to play the music from the projector's speakers. Not only that, but I can also control the music right from the projector. So I can skip forward to the next song, I can go back a song, or I can even pause or play the music right from the projector's remote. So it's a really cool feature that I wasn't expecting. And if I change the Bluetooth mode from mobile to Bluetooth speaker, I'll be able to pair wireless earbuds and listen to whatever the projector is playing right from the earbuds. Once this is set up though, you'll just have to make sure that you go to your sound settings and change the output device to Bluetooth. And while we're talking about the settings, there's a few more really cool ones I wanna show you guys. So we're gonna jump back into settings, hit image, go to advanced settings and scroll all the way down to the bottom you'll see this option here called color correction, and this lets you change the hue, saturation, and brightness for seven different colors, which is incredible if you wanna make sure you get perfectly accurate colors when you're watching movies. The other option that's right next to color correction is this MPEG option or MPEG. What this does is get rid of that blocky noise that you'll typically see in dark areas of lower resolution videos. So if you're watching an older 1080p movie, uh, I'd turn this on to either low, medium, or high, and it'll help smooth out some of that blockiness. This next feature is extremely important if you have little kids. So we're gonna jump back into the settings. We're gonna go down to the general menu, and right here you're gonna see this eye care option. When you enable this, anytime you step in front of the projector or close to the projector, it's going to come up with this message here that says to protect your eyes, please keep an appropriate viewing distance. And it's going to turn off the high powered lasers. Now this is extremely important because this is a 3000 peak lumen projector. If a little kid's going and looking into that, they're gonna do some serious damage to their eyes. And as you saw a moment ago, as long as I step far enough away, this little menu, this little screen right here is gonna disappear and it's gonna go right back to the video. So excellent safety feature if you have little kids. And laser outlet detection is a bit different. This is in case something gets really close to the lasers, it'll just go ahead and shut them off. That's to protect you in case you maybe put a piece of paper, or magazine, something like that falls on top of the projector. It's going to stop the projector from burning a hole in that piece of paper. So definitely a great safety feature that you should keep enabled. If you hit the home button on the remote, you'll be taken to this menu here where you can quickly jump into settings. You also get a screen share option. This gives you a little QR code at the bottom. And if you scan that, you can download the eShare application and control the projector from your phone. File management shows you any connected devices. So if you have a USB device with some movies on it, you can watch those from here. And it also shows any network connected devices as well, like a NAS. And all apps just shows the built-in apps. So that's the eShare application and the file manager that I just showed you. But you can't install any extra applications. If you want to install anything, that's going to be done with the Fire Stick. In any case you're wondering, this top shortcut is just another file management shortcut. You also have your Wi-Fi, so you can get onto your Wi-Fi network, and you also have a Bluetooth shortcut at the top. When it comes to navigating apps on the Fire Stick, you can either use the remote that came with your Fire Stick, or you can use the AWOL remote as well, as long as you turn on the CEC option in the settings. My only complaints with the AWOL remote are that it's not as responsive as the Fire Stick remote, and it doesn't have a backlight, which does make it harder to find the buttons when you're watching a movie at night. So now it's time for the big question. Do I recommend getting one of these for yourself? Well, it depends heavily on how you're going to be using it. If you have a dedicated theater room with controlled lighting, and you can really dim that room down when you're watching movies on this thing, then it's an easy recommendation, especially since AWOL Vision is constantly having steep discounts on just a projector or even bundle deals on the projector and a screen as well. So if you get one of those deals, plus add on my discount code in the description and pinned comment, then this is an easy recommendation. But on the flip side, if you can only be using this in brightly lit environments and you don't have things like blackout curtains and you're gonna be watching some movies with dark scenes in them, then you're probably better off just getting a traditional TV because those dark scenes just aren't gonna look that great on a projector in a bright room. Regardless, let me know what you guys think about the projector in the comments down below, and let me know if you have any questions. That's it for this tech episode. God bless, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.